Hello everyone, welcome to another few money. Today Bitcoin doesn't um, looks like uh, wants to go up, so we're having uh, some of a bit of a bad day. But I'm hoping that by the end of this video we are going uh, again back up, and I will show you just in a few seconds what's happening with the charts. If you enjoy this content, gently touch the like button. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you are new and share it with your friends and let's go to screen share okay we will start by the price to time model as you guys know already this is always the start point of the analysis so let's zoom in a bit and see what's happening here so we have been ranging for a long time already people are bored i guess everyone is just waiting for a big move in bitcoin but however bitcoin looks like it doesn't want to move but i'm guessing that really soon we are going to have some kind of um volatility to say it uh, in a very good way we are going to have some volatile move not to say that we are going to explode and i still don't know if to the upside or to the downside but regarding the price to time model we have been just ranging for some time already we never touched the 20 week simple moving average and we for a long time now we haven't touched also the exponential curve here as my threshold for corrections so as far as the price to time model goes uh, everything looks good we are not going below the level that we shouldn't and we are not going above the level that we also shouldn't go so as for the price of time model there is not nothing else to say everything looks normal let's wait for some um, volatile moves in the future in the next few weeks perhaps so let's go into the mri strategy and the MRI indicator of course and we start by the weekly chart it's a bit cluttered now because I have been analyzing the charts today and there are a few things I want to share with you guys so let's start here let me just zoom a bit more to this side so you can see it better and center the triangle so last week we were able last so just less than 24 hours ago when the weekly candle closed we were able to close above my trend line already this is the white line you see here going up in diagonal and now that we started a new week uh, we have been going down again since to this morning when i started to analyze the charts so the problem is this week we are below the trend line again we have been retracing but it seems that I was just saying uh, two minutes ago that by the time I finish recording this video we will be probably going up again and that's already happened because I can see it by the weekly candle that we have already uh, gone up um, so we recovered a few hundred dollars and that's a good sign so we are just forming here uh, red hammer but if we can at least turn it green I bet that during the course of this week we will of course break this trend line to the upside that's my uh, probability and it just turned green as you guys can see so we are now going up for sure um, so my hope is that and my biggest probability after the analysis is that we are going to the upside again if this continues to be a doji a green doji and probably during the week we will go above the trend line again so as you guys can see this is the triangle that i've been i've been using for my analysis if we break out of this triangle again it's probable that we are going to see new all-time highs because it's the third attempt so we had one attempt here one attempt here and if the next one will evolve to a breakout we could see new all-time highs so as to the week go uh, as as to what the weekly chart is telling us the volume continues to be going sort of sideways just turning a bit down now because we just started the week so it's normal because the volume for the week is still early the rsi is just going sideways the macd continues to be bearish but you guys can see here that even being bearish the bars are not very very extended to the downside and the lines are really close to each other 
which indicates that for some reason the bearish move that we have been um, watching on the charts is not so strong as one might have expected a few days ago so that's a good sign also although the MACD is bearish I see that we could still turn this blue line up again really soon and uh, start a new uh, bullish movement so I don't remember if I said bullish or bearish but just repeating although this looks uh, the MACD is bearish right now I foresee that uh, soon we could see a bullish move and the blue line crossing the orange line so let's go to the one day chart and the one day chart is showing some bullishness right now when I started to record the video this candle here the candle for today was red was coming back down to the bottom of this pendant and I did not like that but uh, hopefully the support was really strong and we are going back up again so while recording this video this candle turned green and it's now a green doji what indicates to me that it's it's a, it's a very it's a very good sign it's a very good sign that we have this candle like that so as you guys can see also uh this is my new uh my new analysis here i i plotted this pendant this upwards pendant here uh which is not very good because you, as you guys know the the pendant when it points up usually it breaks to the downside and that breakout to the downside usually is very very extended um, it could be the same extension as this side of the pendant here so gladly i'm seeing the price going up again so let's see if this continues but if not you will see the different scenarios on the pro frameworks uh, strategy so for the daily I don't see any big differences we are still bullish on the daily the blue line is above the orange the bars are green and they continue to move to the upside although the RSI is just going sideways a bit and the volume starting to decline a bit also but this is because we started a new week and usually it's normal uh, during the start of a new week to have it like that so let's check the four hours and here you can see the pennant much better uh, than before okay this was loading so now we have the MRI loaded we had another touch of the bottom as you guys saw before we had already several touches at the bottom of this uh, pendant here this candle was really down here when I started to record now it went back up we started a new a new just a few minutes before the candle close on the four hour we started uh, to go up we formed this hammer a really nice hammer indicating reversal of the price action to the upside and now we started just a few minutes ago a new candle that is also green and continuing this upside move so that's good in my book and I like the price structure inside this pennant so let's see what happens here uh, let's just configure um, check the bitmax funding rate so that's a very good sign also the bitmax funding rate came really really down and probably this is what triggered this upside move in just a few minutes while i was starting the video and now uh, the bar went up a lot we went up since i started the video we went up about one thousand dollars so uh, I don't know if this was uh, <laughs> if this is some kind of sign, but as soon as as I started to record the video, we went up one thousand dollars. Probably I will have to start recording more videos during the day, and we'll be in the seventy k's in just a few hours. <laughs> so I like uh, so just to finish this Bitmax funding rate analysis. I like the Bitmax funding rate. It's really low. It's right on the point zero one although the premium takes us to 0.03 but that's really not uh, a high level of uh, funding rate so that's also good in my book and I like that funding rate over there so let's just confirm on the one hour real quick so this is what happened in the last few minutes and this was wow so we went down I started to record the video while this red candle was still coming down here and then immediately after I started the video, this candle happened. That's, that's amazing. Okay, so just to confirm, the BitMEX funding rate is exactly as I said before on the four hour chart. 
So actually, sorry, I was not, I didn't start to record the video on this red candle. I started to record it here on this green candle. So the green candle was coming back down and I will just check the, let's check the 10 minute. So you guys can see here. So we've been recording for 10 minutes now. We were around here, back down here. And exactly when I started to, on the top of the hour, this happened. When I started to record the video, this happened. So that's a, <laughs> that's a very good sign. I should start to record videos more often. And let's leave it on the four hour for later analysis. So I guess the support on the four hour, you guys can see here, the volume by price level was a really good support. Also these two uh, moving averages, the uh, so this is the 50 and the 200, the purple, were really nice supporting the price. So we have, this is the 100, that's the 200, and that's the 50. So uh, the 50 is the yellow and the 200 is the purple, and they hold the price also with the uh, bottom side of this pennant. And that was a very good move to the upside, which I did not even see real time because I was recording on the price to time model chart. So let's go quickly to the pro indicators. And now this looks a bit crazy today. Lots of colors, lots of drawings and plotting and stuff. And it looks like I am taking some kind of uh, weird drugs, but just bear with me for some time and I will explain it. So in white, you see the ranging channel, of course. Uh, this was plotted before, so you guys are familiar with this already. The orange rectangle boxes here, the, this rectangle and that rectangle on top, this is the resistance and this was the support that I found uh, also as a good uh, speculation, uh, speculative area for going long when the se second range boundary was forming. And if you guys remember, this was when I went long at 47, 47 and a half thousand. And I said the price would come back down again and probably go inside this speculative area here. And we were lucky because it really came down to the low 47s, almost 47 even. And we, I was able to go long and I hope you guys also went long because this was a very good opportunity to go long here. As we know, the second range boundary is always a very good indication that the price is going to go up again in a reversal, at least to the top part of this ranging channel. So this is what happened and I was really happy because of that. But today I plotted something new. So this is the pennant that we were discussing in the previous charts. This is now in blue because it was a bit cluttered already in this chart. So I decided to use different colors for you guys to understand. So the ranging channel is the white one. The pennant is the blue one. And I now have three more boxes and I'm going to explain what this is all about. So in here we have uh, the pennant. So we are ranging inside this. We are ranging inside the ranging channel, as you guys can see for the boundaries, the first, the second and the third. But we are also ranging inside this pennant here. So in this upside move, we have been uh, touching. So we touched, of course, there because this is the start of the pennant, but we touched once, twice, three times, four times. So we already touched the top part of the pennant four times. And we touched, of course, this bottom side here once, twice, and three and four times today. So today was also the fourth time that we touched it. So we have been arranging also inside this pennant. So there are different scenarios here that can happen. If we break this pennant to the downside, and you guys know already that this is the extension of the possible drop. So the possible drop, if it happens after we go up again and come back down, this is the blue line that uh, represents the possibility of the price going down. It's not a very good possibility. I don't like it. It would take us back to the 40Ks levels. And that's why I have this green box here. Although the probability of this happening, in my opinion, is the lowest of the of the possibilities that we have here on this chart. So the lowest probability is that we break this pennant to the downside and we come back down to the low 40s 
and to my second long speculative area. In this area, if this possibility occurs, if this probability occurs, I'm all in here because this is like where all the smart money is already. We have been discussing this on the live streams and also in previous videos. So this speculative area is my absolute bottom for this uh, price structure and configuration we have here on this chart. So basically, if we come back down here, I will go all in as soon as we touch the 40K. If we don't touch the 40K, I could dollar cost average this move down and try to get close uh, as close as possible to the absolute bottom that i foresee could happen in this um, time frame uh, until we could come back down here so this is the blue uh, this is the blue probability which i think will not happen completely here coming back to the 40k but if it does i'm already prepared with a plan and I will be waiting for it. So my other probability is that we could break the pennant, but the support is really strong around the 47 and a half, 48,000, 49,000. And we have also another support here that could avoid the breakout of this pennant to the downside. So I have a first speculative area here in green too. And this is where I would start to um go long with some um small positions of course not so very big ones here and i would still leave cash on the side for any probabilities of this occurring and we are going to the second long speculative area so this is my uh plan b let's say if if you call it this one here down here the plan a which is again my last least probability of happening is this one here the second probability is that we could break the pennant and come back here. So I would not go with very large positions in this area. The other probability is that we go up and we break this pennant to the upside and we break the third range boundary level that comes from the other ranging channel. And in that case, as I don't see the strength that we need to break the new all-time high, I would take some profit here in this uh, speculative area that goes from 61,000 to 63,000. Uh, by the way, I forgot to mention the levels of the other two. I will just in a second. So this will be my take profit speculative area. But again, I will not take a lot of profit here from my positions bought uh, previously on the second range boundary and even the ones before that. This. Uh, if you are an aggressive trader, you will take like 10% max of uh, uh, profit here and you leave the, the rest of your positions there unless you see that the reversal is very imminent and very uh, volatile and then probably you could take a bit more of uh, take profit here. But in my opinion, as I consider myself a very aggressive trader, I, I, I like to take more risks than the very conservative trader. I would take a maximum of 10, 15 percent max of profit in this area and leave the rest of the positions there. So and this is because I don't see Bitcoin being able to break this resistance and forming a new all time high really soon. So I believe that we could be ranging for some more time until actually Bitcoin is able to break all the resistances here and start a new trend to the upside, forming a new all time high uh, after breaking this one here at 64 and 900 around 64 900 dollars. So in my opinion, if you are a more conservative trader, you could take, for example, 25 to 35 percent uh, profits in this area and wait to see what happens next. So let's go to the levels of these boxes here, the green one, which is my first long speculative area. If we break down the pennant, this will be from 51,000 to 53,000. This is where I believe that the price could take us. Uh, and I believe the supports will hold the price here as the biggest probability if we come down as a breakout um, to the downside. The other one, which is the very, very small probability of happening, is the box that goes from 40,000 to 44,000. 
and I will just leave some cash on the side. If this happens, I go all in. You guys know it already. So I hope this is not so uh, confusing as it seems on the on the beginning of the analysis. But n right now, you understand what I've been doing today. I've been plotting all this and thinking about different probabilities. And in my opinion, according to the price structure that we have and, and chart configuration, I believe this green box down here is the smallest probability. This one and this one are not so different uh, in terms of percentage of probabilities, but I am prepared for each one of them. So in the meantime, in between those two boxes, you guys know already this is the dump zone. Uh, if you if you mark um, if you start uh, Fibonacci retracement from the first range boundary to the second, you already know that we are trading inside the dump zone. So I'm not doing anything until the price tells me what to do, and this is when, if we get to this speculative area in red, or we get to the green speculative area here. So this is my analysis for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you enjoyed this content, you guys know already what to do. Let me just stop screen share. Uh, so here it is. So if you guys enjoyed the content of today, I hope you did. Uh, just gently press the like button. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you are new here. Share it with your friends and let's grow the community and learn some more trading uh, with my next videos. So until then, I will see you on the next one. Bye bye.